Okay, so um, Matcap part two. I'll dive right away into this and I'll show you how to use your uh, how to use any matcap in uh, Lens Studio. For that, we're gonna have to build a shader that we're going to apply on something on an object. So just for the sake of uh, the tests, I'm going to add a face mesh first, and boom! Immediately we get this kind of computational uh, grotesque of this. Um, mask that makes our idle person one in this case aka bart into uh, our robotic uh, looking friend um right uh, as you can see when we add a face mesh over here um the face mesh has uh, obviously a mesh and also it has a material uh, the material we can see here also in the resources list uh, i'm sure you have experimented already a bit with this and uh, yeah you can on any given material you always have like uh, loads of parameters you can change for example the default color let's make it some kind of lilac uh, you can have a texture you can change the metallicness of it make it more metallic the roughness of it make it a bit more diffuse more paper like and uh, all these qualities i mean the the, the any uh, diffuse uh, um, any diffuse material here diffuse uh, has these properties and uh, as you tweak these properties it will uh, radically change the the look of your um, uh, of your material but uh, of course unless you have a library of uh, pre uh, you know of, uh, settings uh, that you have saved to before you know tweaking these to look uh, every time the way you want can be quite a pain in the ass uh, so that's why people save materials first of all you know as you work you will over uh, over time you will have a material library of your own of things that uh, you know somehow define your your style and your approach uh, and your visual uh, approach to 3d but um, you can also just uh, uh, instead of having to save settings uh, use uh, settings that only apply to one specific software for example in this case lens studio you can just use a matcap save it as a as a matcap that can be easily distributed and used uh, across uh, uh, different pieces of software. Um, so, what? How do we use a matcap? I'm going to show you. So here I have a bunch of them ready that I took from the previous video. So I'm just going to drag a bunch to start with. I'm going to drag this one. I'm going to drag it to my resources in um, in Lens Studio. I'm also going to drag this one. Uh, this one I do not yet know how these look like but I'm just gonna drag a bunch and then I'll do my shader and then we look at the results then we see what we like but uh, for now I have here a bunch of matcaps when I click you can see in the preview here is the preview you can see that there are just these square images that contain a, a sphere uh, you know uh, perfectly contained sphere so the sphere touches the border of the square image and uh, this sphere basically gives us all the colors of that material as reflected as the light reflects on a perfect uh, perfectly reflective uh, sphere actually not perfectly reflective but on a sphere made of that material let's say that's uh, probably a more uh, accurate definition all right, let's uh, stop with words. I want to now um, create the shader. So as you can see, I have my default scene here. I'm uh, in the material editor. Let's see. Uh, in order to create a shader, what I need is go here to add a resource, material, and I'm going to create a graph empty. What the hell is a graph empty? So graphs is uh, a graph is uh, uh, Lens Studio's uh, way of um, creating um, uh, shaders uh, is a no-code language for shaders uh, I'm gonna make some space here can I make some space can I hide the inspector I can drag it out can I drag it out yeah I can drag it out okay so for now I'm gonna drag the inspector out uh, make it a little smaller uh, because I'm gonna need this uh, panel over here right 
so when I create a graph empty, I'm gonna rename these. I'm gonna rename these to matcap. I need to create this uh, shader only once. So what the hell is a shader? Um, a shader is, uh, let's say, given a. Um, so when you apply a shader as a material to um, to a mesh to an object, what the shader does. Uh, um, the graphics card is going to take that shader and it's going to ask the shader every time it needs to render a pixel from that mesh it's going to ask the shader hey what color should this uh, pixel be and the shader returns back a color which you can see here that's the this parameter over here this uh, little box over here that's the color that the shader will return to the graphics card in order to paint it so for example here we see that this mask uh, around the eyes and the nose it has these highlights so that's those are white pixels but around the cheeks is uh, a little bit darker so those pixels are uh, darker and this uh, the color of that pixel even though it's always lilac what we defined uh, we want this mask to be lilac uh, because of the way the light falls and the material is defined uh, it will have different highlights and uh, dark uh, areas and that's defined by uh, a, a shader now when we create a new shader, uh, by default, uh, the shader doesn't know what color to assign. So um, we need to somehow figure out how to get the right pixel from the matcap and pump it here to, to the color, right? So I'll, I'll show you how to, how to do that. First I'll show you how to do that um, in the way that I have prepared and that I've uh, used in my own uh, shader already for for a while so the first thing we need to do in a shader is to um, create uh, for ourselves the possibility of giving it any texture that we want and for that we take a parameter in that we call it texture texture object parameter so that's let's say how we are going to assign our matcap i'm going to call it uh, matcap texture so that later on when we click on the material we can just drag the texture there and uh, uh, and we always can designate uh, or assign a material to to our shader now I don't have so much space here let me open this up a bit and drag this away uh, I can also zoom in and out by using my mouse wheel and if I click my mouse wheel I can pan but uh, I need to create a bit of space for myself here because I'm gonna need to put a bunch of nodes in between now the second thing I'm going to need, so I don't only need the texture, I'm also going to need the reflection of, um, so when the light falls on the mask, uh, so if you draw a line from any pixel to the light, and then from the point where the light falls on the mask to my eye, that vector is called the reflection vector. So um, it's basically, uh, imagine that you have um, x-rays coming out of your eyes and they bounce off the mask and they go somewhere else and some of those x-rays are gonna hit the sun some of those x-rays are gonna hit the wall some of those x-rays are gonna hit the the floor as these rays come out of your eyes they're gonna bounce off the objects in the room they're gonna hit other things and those are the things that you see reflected so we need to know that vector we need the reflection vector reflection vector and lens studio gives us that uh, it kind of calculates that and as you can see the reflection vector box it has this little uh, tab over here and what this tab does is uh, on every frame um, actually on every pixel rather uh, uh, Lens Studio is going to calculate the vector for us and it's going to give it to us here so all we need to do is get that vector and do a bunch of operations on it in, uh, in our case what we need is to scale it so that it falls within the area of our matcap. So uh, to scale it, uh, scale it and shift it basically. So that zero, zero in the reflection vector would be the center of our image. So this is zero, zero in the 2D space of the image, but this should be the zero, zero in the reflection, basically the center of our sphere. So we have to um, scale it and shift it. And to do that, what we're going to need is to basically multiply. So, or actually, I'm just going to drag this from here out. And if I let go of my mouse button anywhere in the canvas, then it will just ask me, hey, what do you want to place there? And what I want to place there is basically a multiply, multiply, and uh, 
uh, a multiplication, as you know, from primary school, you multiply two things, right? You multiply A times B, for example. So that's uh, that's why this box has two inputs. A, which comes from uh, the reflection vector. Uh, B, which is another vector. In this case, is 1, 1, 1. And um, 1, 1, 1 will, of course, uh, make uh, not change anything. But we want to change something, we want to scale these down a little bit. We want to scale it to a little below half the size. So half the size would be 0.5, so we want 0.48 here, 0.48 here. I happen to have that value, I, I know that value, so I'm just putting that value exactly like uh, I uh, have in my, in, in my shader. Uh, but this is completely prepared, but you could put any other value there, and uh, I'll show you later. Uh, the effect that, that has. Now, after multiplying, I also need to add something. So again, I do the same thing. I'm going to repeat this action. So you see, I went too quick there. So I just grab the tab, pull out an arrow, and I don't connect it to anything yet. I just drop it to an empty space. And then Lens Studio asks me, what do I want to add there? And what is it that I want to add? I want to add an add operator. And this add operator, let's make some space. I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to drag this other to the left and drag this down. All right, and then zoom back in. So I want to add a, a fixed value, and that's going to be the center of my um, markup image. And centers, you know, when you work in 3D and uh, any graphics related stuff, uh, 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 one is the full dimension and anything less than one so 0.5 would be half of it so here we just do 0.5 and here we do 0.5 and then that's uh, zero because I mean we're working with 2d images so we don't need this the last component and that's all we need to do to our reflection vector and uh, then we need uh, this will give us uh, XY position which we can look up in the texture map and for doing lookups what we need is a um, something called a texture to the sample and what a sampler does is it basically looks things up so where does it look things up from it looks things up from the image that we feed it so here i'm going to connect this to the texture so the the my matcap which is will be here when i assign it uh, this sampler will look in my matcap using this coordinate here and it will look there what pixel color is the co uh, is at this location at this coordinate and it will produce that color as the output and then where is the location of the pixel we want to look at is the one we just calculated so I from the add I plug it here to the UV coordinates again I'm gonna make some space here I'll zoom in there and uh, what I just did is basically I get with the sampler, I get the pixel from the matcap at the location that I calculated from the reflection. And then this gives me an output, which is the color, which is what the shader needs as an input. Whoops, again, connect. And uh, hopefully that's it, that should work. Okay, let's test it. So if it works, then I select the face mesh and yeah here i see that the face mesh has a material and instead of giving it, uh, the face mesh material i'm gonna assign my matcap to the face mesh and there you go this is my shader this is the shader i just built now when a shader doesn't have any um, pixels to draw from or is using a texture but the texture is not yet assigned uh, here if i click on matcap you can see that my matcap yeah, my matcap uh, is here. It, it wants this matcap texture. That's the parameter we created in the shader. It is now here as a, something that we, we have in the editor that we can assign to it. Um, so because it says here none, it will kind of invent a texture. And the texture is a checkerboard in pink and, and black. That's why you're seeing this. But the moment I drag one of the matcaps that I imported, I'm going to drag them, I'm going to click here and just drag it here to matcap texture. Boom, there you have it. That's it.
So we have a shader now that can render any matcap. So that's the matcap that we got from the from the GitHub. I'll share the link. And uh, because I assigned it now to my shader or the shader that we built together in this video, now it renders in the mask as you can see. To prove it, I'm gonna try another one. There you go. That's another one. And yet a third one. Uh, looks more like clay. This is a kind of coppery look. Ah, some kind of iridescent uh, material. Yes, again, some, something coppery and uh, shiny, metallic, more iris iridescent stuff. And this one that I kind of like. Kind of like. Um, I'm going to try this one as well. I like this one too. And again, I select the matcap material. Here I see that I can assign a texture. I just added a new one there. And yeah, I like that one. Uh, I'm going to keep that one. And uh, yeah, that's your first shader in Lens Studio. Now the uh, you can also uh, exp uh, you can export this shader by clicking export here. I'm gonna call this Matcaps R Forever, and this is now a material that you can import into any uh, Lens Studio project, and then just get any uh, Matcap from the internet or make your own in Photoshop or whatever software you like and that will um, that will simply just work um, remember that matcaps are square images and um, uh, that's all you need just create a square image um, I think that does it for this tutorial ah, maybe there's one more thing that I want to add and that's that uh, the technique that I just showed you uh, of building the shader I mean the studio has this nice graph editor for shaders but actually, you can write the shader in any other shader language and it will just work. Matcaps are a very uh, universal technique. Like anything that supports shaders, you can use matcaps with. So Unity will also work. Uh, Blender will also work. Uh, you can just use the matcap in, uh, in Unity uh, as well using this uh, same technique. So yeah, I hope... Uh, yeah, I hope you uh, you can apply these to your projects and you can find uh, cool things to do with it. And yeah, that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Cheers.